Speak loud. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, did you meet with any psychologists, social workers, child development experts um, to talk about maybe some of the mental health effects um, from bringing forth a bill like this on kids? Not directly. Like that. Not specifically to the things in this bill. Have I met with them before to understand? Generally, yes. yes. Generally, yes. Specific to this bill, since we're talking about this bill. No. No. Thank you. Um, we have safe spaces in our schools that are really important um, for our kids, um, especially kids in the LGBTQ plus community. It sounds like this bill would not allow for those safe spaces to exist. Is that your intention? Could you, how do you interpret that out of the So story? a teacher can be a safe space and that can be a place, that classroom can be a place for kids like in the LGBTQ plus community to go and be safe, be themselves. It sounds like this bill wouldn't allow those to exist. Is that your understanding? No, so my first I heard that. Yeah. Ledge Council, can you speak to that at all? Would, no? Okay. All right, I'll follow up on that. Um, okay. Um, is it your intention to impose strict scrutiny standards to all parental and guardian rights listed in this bill? I just want, I was trying to get clarity on that. Strict scrutiny. It's in the bill. Just take a define that. What do you mean? Okay. Well, I will email your office on that. Um, can you clarify? Um, so one of the new things is controversial subjects with this version mm -hmm. of the bill, right? So can you clarify the controversial subjects and what raises to the level of substantial public debate? Um, so for me, for example, if I were to continuously argue that the world is flat, um, and then I would write a bill saying that the teaching of flat earth ideology in schools um, to address that. Um, and the response from the majority of the general public disagreeing with me, is that enough to raise the issue that it's a controversial subject? How do we define that controversy? How does it rise to the level of a controversial subject? Well, first of all, it's got to be controversial. So you have to have you you got to have people on both sides, and it has to be something that is, I think, uh, probably going to be a um, more than just a complaint that would be centered on one small geographical area. So to be something that raises or rises to that level, I would think that uh, critical race theory is probably one. That would be a controversial. There's been some people that say it is, some that say it, and that's been pretty, pretty hot button issue. You know, also it might raise to that level. Uh, what's being taught in class, uh, pornographic things that are in some uh, teaching materials that are in the classes. That might be another area um, that I want to know if they're going to be teaching that to my five-year-old that's just got, gotten into kindergarten, that they don't need to be talking about all the sexual things that they're directing in some of the uh, curriculum that they're putting out at that age. I think that would be controversial. So, I mean, things that rise to that level. And I think that's going to be something that's going to be not as a necessarily an objective thing. It's going to be subjective by the parent. Because what might be, what might be controversial to you might not be controversial to me. So I think you'd have to probably bring that complaint forward and then see how the administration you know, deals with it. I mean, maybe it's something that could you think is contrary, but it isn't. You know what I'm saying? So I think it gives a little bit of flexibility with the bill. As long as people are acting in good faith, I don't think any of these things be, become like they're in stone. So I'll, I'll, I'll respond because, it, again, getting a variety of legal opinions on some of the things that are in here. It has been noted that that is another area that potentially could use some definition. Did we have an exact definition of that right now? No. If you have some ideas, we will be glad to consider them, or if someone else has some. But it's an area, you're, you're right, that, that, that 
do we do we want we, we didn't because we we respect how the committee hearings and stuff go we left the left it the way it was on, on, until someone has some some input that we would gladly consider it seems like it's left open to being able to create controversial subjects and I'm particularly concerned about that when those controversial subjects could be kids and how that can affect kids when they feel like they are a controversial subject um, and I am deeply concerned about that specifically um, I would also point out that it seems like political groups could create controversial subjects hypothetically that they think might be a way that they could win an election so they would create conversation on it create discourse invent a situation divide people create controversy and there we are so the way that it's defined right now there needs to be discussion about that i would submit to you um, i think we touched on timely notice needs mm -hmm. some more definition um, how is personal conviction defined for the purpose of subsection 10 um, the right to opt out of a class or instructional materials at the child's school for reasons based on either a religious or personal conviction. How does that, how is personal conviction defined? How do we decide what a personal conviction is? <coughs> Subsection 10. And is there a process for opting out? I don't see one, so that's why I'm asking. There, there, no, there's not a process in there for opting out. Okay. Personal conviction would, uh, I, as I would define it, as I would interpret it, uh, personal conviction would be uh, the values that I hold, uh, how, how I operate as a person. Uh, if, if I have personal conviction that um, I don't want my child to be subject to a particular subject uh, in school, I have, the, I have the ability to work with my child and opt out. It looks like you don't necessarily have to opt out prior to, to being absent from the way that I see it written. And it raises concerns for me that a parent could find out their kid wasn't in school um, and say, oh, I opted them out on personal conviction. I'd see concerns about truancy, um, and then I'd also con see concerns about, like, there's no real definition for personal conviction. We can just opt our kids out on personal conviction. So it's really broad, which I think is a conversation worth having. Um, the, so it, we, there's not an, uh, there's not a process for opting out. So would you see that as a statewide process for opting out, or would it be determined locally? Is that something that each school board would need to determine? How would we determine the opting out for personal conviction? I would think it'd be locally. It'd be the local school board, because it's not necessarily going to be something that might be affected, say, up in Hudson, as it would be maybe down in Racine, as an example. I mean, there could be different different things at, at play with, with that. Um, we talked about, did we address definition of a crime? Did you touch on that? No. Okay. Um, it says the right to be timely, <coughs> timely informed. You touched on timely, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, timely informed of any acts of violence or crimes occurring on the grounds of the child's school. Do we have a definition of crime that we're operating on, Budget Council? The bill doesn't create a definition of crime. We do have in the criminal code a general definition of crime. I can read that out loud if you're interested. But the bill doesn't, but the have, bill doesn't have it. Okay. You get section 939, is that right, Amber? Correct. The and the crime is actually defined there. Okay. Uh, and of course, you could have a different, it could be a varying degree of what that crime is too. And you could have a blue collar crime where somebody embezzles money that's one thing or you could have a crime of violence where you have 
you know, somebody assaulted or you might have something where somebody's threatening, you know, a bomb threat or something like, like that, that criminal thing. So there'd be a difference that way. Okay. Um, last question. Um, so regarding parental rights, parents' rights, um, do you think that a parent of a student with a disability has a right to expect that the state funds of at least 60% reimbursement? There's a long list of rights in here. And so you got parents with kids with disabilities. Do you think that they have a right to a 60% level of reimbursement for their kids' needs? I think they have a right to ask for that, and they have a right to uh, come to their legislators to ask for that. We don't have money involved in this as far as what we're going to fund and not fund. That's a discussion that's done through the legislature, and everybody has that opportunity to bring forward, you know, whatever those recommendations are. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much it. Every child in the state has the constitutional right to an adequately funded education. Mm -hmm. So as we talk about rights and what parents can expect from our schools, I think it's fair to ask, where's the, where's the assurance that particularly kids with, parents with kids with deaf disabilities have the reimbursement for the services that they need for their kids? Are they not getting funded now? I mean, I, I would think that there are some that are funded at, at higher levels. Some are covered at 100%. Some are covered at way less than 100%, depending on what school district you're in. Um, so yeah, they definitely have a right to ask for that. They definitely have a right to ask for that. And you know, they have a right to have that, that process that we go through with the budgeting process every year, or every two years. Absolutely. All right, thanks. That's my Thank you, Representative Bining. Representative 